This guy. Up this where it goes. And oh god, I just picked up the TV. Oh god, I just picked up the TV. Well, I didn't mean to do that. Oh god. The oh, TV's missing everything. Cables everywhere. Snickers, no. Save that for later. There we go. A. And now we're playing Animal Crossing. In today's video, we're going to be talking about MUVR, which is a great way to play all your old retro games in an emulator setting while being in virtual reality. All right, and here we are. Uh, so the first thing that we're going to want to do is go to EmuVR, or is it MUVR? The link down in the description below, where it says uh, get the beta here. And on platforms, it only works for Oculus Rift, Oculus Link, Quest with v, uh, PC VR, Val Index, HTC Vibe, WMR, and your 2D monitor. Also, it only works on Windows. Sorry, everyone on Mac and Linux, this is a no-go for you. MUVR will not work on any other platform like PlayStation VR or any mobile VR, including the Oculus Quest, unless you're connected with the PC cable, Oculus Go, Gear VR, or Google Cardboard. It also says here that MUVR will always be free, and if you want to support the project, they are on Patreon. I'll have a link to that Patreon down below. We don't provide any games. You must bring your own, and you can download the beta in our installation guide, which link here. We'll follow that in a second. Stay tuned for more updates. So what exactly is MUVR can support PlayStation, PlayStation 2, Nintendo 64, GameCube, Arcade, Sega, Dreamcast, Super Nintendo, Nintendo, you know, kind of your lower end systems. It does support 3DS. Basically what it's using is RetroArch. We can scroll down for more information. Uh, they talk about the features and there's a little snippet here of kind of what it looks like the newest thing is that the light guns do work you can follow them on twitter facebook patreon youtube so let's go ahead and get this installed so scrolling back up here we want to click on the installation guide which is right here and here we are so what we want to do is click installation guide and number two is our downloads so in order to set up and start playing MUVR, you'll need to download two files, one being the program itself. Then you need RetroArch 1.7.5. This is a very specific version. As it even says here, note that this is a specific version of 1.7.5 and is required for the program to work. You don't want 1.8, not 1.14 or any other version, even from the official site. This is the only one that you want. So we're going to go ahead and download both of these. All right, now that we have those downloaded, uh, we're going to go ahead and extract the MUVR first. Going to go ahead and extract all. And it's going to create a folder. All right, now that that's extracted, we see here we have a RetroArch folder. And I'm just going to open this up. I'm going to select all. And I'm going to drag it over to that RetroArch folder inside the MUVR folder. Okay, once that is dragged over, we're going to go back here. On um, the next thing that we need to do, if we open up our games, we don't have any here. So what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a new folder, and we're going to call this NES. We'll start with that. And then let's go ahead, let's create another folder, and let's call this GameCube. Okay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a couple of games. It says multiple times throughout this to not load in just hundreds and thousands of games you know every game for every system you can but you might have some stability issues uh what you're going to want to do is just a curated you know number of games like your top you know 30 40 games per system or something like that you know have a quality selection also muvr does not come with any games you must provide your own and do not ask how or where to download roms a simple moogle search will get you there just do a search do some some research on it okay because i cannot tell you and no one here can tell you no one on the discord can tell you you just have to figure it out with that disclaimer out of the way, we're going to go ahead and move our games over to those folders that we created. It does give you some examples that are easy to follow. So Super Nintendo, you can either call it Super Nintendo or SNES. Just try to make it, you know, you can name the folder anything you like, but using recognizable names will make the automatic folder detection a lot easier. Uh, we'll get to that in the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer some games over and we'll go from there. All right, so I went ahead and I added a couple of videos as well 
Uh, so we have like the Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero movie, a couple Jackie Chan adventure episodes, some Megas XLR uh, episodes, Scooby-Doo, Zombie Island, the movie, and SD Gundam Force. Just so that way I can show that. And so I did add a couple tracks here in music as well uh, from the Zelda and Chill album uh, by Mikel and Game Chops. So and if we go ahead and open up MEVR, it's going to make this bigger. And we have the fundamentals. I mean, we have a lot of TVs here, a ceiling fan, good old clock. It looks like we can levitate or fly. Okay, let's go ahead and let's turn the light on. There it is, space bar. Whew. Okay, so there we have it. Um, so we have a lot of TVs. We got some nice pumpkin Halloween decorations outside. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, here is our very 90s bed. And so in order to kind of do anything, you know, like to spawn in some games and whatnot, you know, it's pretty barren except for all these TVs and kind of trash and, and stuff. So let's go ahead. We hit tab. We could spawn in different items, scrolling down, some snacks or candles, some different types of light guns. That's pretty cool. All the different TVs. But when we click systems, there's nothing here. But we added everything in. So why is nothing here? So the reason why we don't have any systems is we didn't go to the game scanner. So we're going to go ahead and open up this executable. More information, run anyways. Retroarch patch for MUVR applied successfully. Okay, let's go ahead. First thing that we're going to do is click attempt autofill. Please don't forget to manually check for missing. So if anything's missing, then uh, you can manually check for it. But as you see here, it found our GameCube, our Nintendo music and video folder and the media type. We could change this to CDs. We could change it to cassette tapes, NES cartridges. We can even change the video formats. So if we have like stuff that's DVD, like widescreen, for instance, we can do that. But all this media I put on there was four by three aspect ratio. So I'm gonna leave it as VHS tapes, okay? So then what we're gonna wanna do is update core data. Say okay, and save changes. Then we're gonna want to scan games for MUVR. So I added our games in. Then we want to download missing cores. So if we're missing those cores, which we are currently, we wanna hit download so it downloads those. Perfect. Just go ahead and close this. Let's go back. Now if we open up, MUVR again. See, it's nighttime now. Everyone's house is lit up. That's pretty cool. So if we go over here, we'll get the light on so we can see. Now when we hit tab under systems, we have some GameCube, Nintendo, and a music player, and also a VHS player. If we click on GameCube, here's all of our games. Same with the music. Each track is its own cassette, so that's kind of annoying, but it's not the end of the world. Here's our Nintendo cartridges and our VHS tapes. Now, none of these have any art. So that's now kind of the, the new problem that we're having. So what about scraping our games? Uh, so when we get the game scanner, you know, that's what added everything in. We got all that, so that all worked. But what about customization? Let's go ahead and go there. And the TLDNR is the easiest way to add game labels is to download the cool user-made label pack from the spreadsheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up. And here we have a custom artwork spreadsheet. Uh, this was made with Google Docs. And you just look for your system. Uh, so let's see, we had Nintendo, but we also had GameCube. So those are the GameCube ones. What we're going to do, let's go ahead and download this here and hit download. So we see here under custom and MUVR, we have labels. And then there's already a GameCube folder. So I'm gonna go ahead and extract all of these labels into that GameCube folder. We're gonna say, okay. So now when we go into custom, we go to labels, GameCube. We have all the disc art for all those GameCube games. So let's go back here. Let's go ahead and get Nintendo. Gonna go ahead and download this one. Download anyways, extract to custom labels and NES and say, okay. So I am curious if we scroll down, if there's a VHS, if someone's already put that together or not. Oh, they have, look at that. Let's see if they have Scooby-Doo Zombie Island. Quite a few Scooby-Doo's, uh, but no Zombie Island, which uh, surprises me actually. I thought for sure that they would have that. That's too bad. But this is a very handy tool. I'll make sure to have a link to this in the description below. So that way you can get all of your systems and get them scraped. So let's go ahead and let's jump back in. Uh, again, we're not using the, the VR, so it is a bit a bit wonky, but using the mouse and keyboard, it is possible to navigate. Just kind of a little bit weird. So let's go ahead and, and load in here. Okay, let's turn this light on so we can see. And tab and go to GameCube. 
There we go. So now these ones have the correct art with them. So that is phenomenal. And it looks like these ones don't. And it's probably because they have that USA at the end of it. And so the name is slightly different from what the file is. And so we just have to make sure that the names match completely. And then the art will be here. Let's go ahead and go to NES. Looks like kind of the same deal. Uh, what remains makes sense. So this is a ROM. I did not know if this one, you know, would actually load in or not. Let's see. Can we let's put that down there? Okay. All right. I'm throwing it now. Okay. It's been thrown. Well, it looks like what remains is actually already in there. So it does work. <laughs> Fantastic. You can customize the posters. You can customize the the bed. I think you can even put like your own snacks in here. I believe I'm not I'm not entirely sure on that one, but I know you can customize the floor. Right now we have carpet. We can make this hardwood floor if needed. We can paint the walls, I believe, uh, to be a different color. And you can really just make this your own space, which is just really cool. Uh, so I'm probably going to work on getting this organized and getting this looking the way I want it to look. All right, so just as a quick little update here, um, getting my room kind of cleaned up from that mess that it was earlier. I did turn on the posters so that way I could see where each number goes. So this is the default. I did put two images, that one there, and then we have that one. So those are from the Modern Broadcast uh, magazine on my Kofi. So go check those out. They are completely free. Any support is much appreciated. So kind of set up the nightstand a little bit. We've got a couple snacks going. GameCube, a smaller TV there. And we have some Mega XLR here. I'm going to go ahead and turn this down because it's to be a little bit loud. So yeah, we're just able to kind of uh, sit down here on the floor is where I'm currently at while I was getting everything all situated. But we have Batman and Mr. Freeze Sub-Zero movie. we have got a couple NES games and uh, what we're going to do is kind of get the GameCube also set up here. There we go. It's down here. Put that down there like that and bring this back forward. There we go. Okay, so we got that going. So a couple of my games disappeared. I'm not exactly sure why. I did uh, change a few of the names. That I'm thinking that's probably what it is. So every time you change a name of a file, it will kick out. So uh, keep that in mind if you're going to be doing that. So we're going to have to go rescan and re-add the missing files with the game scanner. So it's going to go ahead and go Animal Crossing here. And then I wonder actually, we can grab that and put that down for a second. There we have it. We're playing Animal Crossing right now. All right, so here we are in the room. Uh, we got a couple posters. Uh, there is more that we could do, uh, but here we have uh, Modern on the Stairs, th the uh, the October issue, a Flipper Zero up top, magazine cover. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. couple various uh, posters here you don't scream playthrough uh, video which actually I don't think that's live yet so spoilers that's coming up <laughs> and then over here we have uh, the snippet that I wrote for uh, the volume 3 uh, for uh, Natsu and their game of Maple Forest Kind of got that posted in there. That's pretty cool. Uh, so here we have the Nintendo 64. We have uh, Legend of Zelda in there right now. Here's Majora's Mask. There's other games. Um, and then this. The, so this is a, a music tape player. And uh, here we have uh, <laughs> good old Bowser's Peaches. Oops. And, uh, oops, there we go. Let's 
as soon as we push the button, we are now... We have a blaster! And we can switch. <laughs> it works flawlessly! Oh! There we go. <laughs> Draw! I missed! Oh, that one got away. So I still need to edit the bed. Um, get different sheets going and a different pillow. That's a bit, uh, it's a bit much. But, uh, yeah. It's, it's coming together. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe down below. Have a great week, everyone, and take care.